Welcome to Anchored. I'm Sarah. I've got a question for you today. When it comes to your enemies, do you prefer to be on the defense or the offense? Oh, you say you don't necessarily have enemies. Well, what about the people who seem, if not dangerous, then dangerously misguided? The people who seem to get you worked up just by existing with their untenable beliefs and their unpardonable lifestyle. Yeah, those people. They are essentially your enemies. Do you prefer to be on the offense or the defense with them? What if I said that whether you're on the offense or the defense, you've already lost? See, if we're on offense and defense, we're in battle. We've taken up our sword, drawn lines, and we're geared up for a fight. So what is a winning approach? Well, the words of Jesus in Matthew 16, 24 say, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. If you think bringing a knife to a gunfight seems crazy, how about bringing a cross to a sword fight? When we take up our sword, people get hurt. When we take up our cross, people see Jesus. It might seem crazy, but we happen to serve the God of the impossible. So how can we tell we're taking up our cross and not our sword? Well, for Jesus, it was hard and painful. It's not going to feel easy. It meant Jesus' own people rejected him. He even had to have help carrying the cross when it became too heavy. Remember Simon of Cyrene? He came alongside and carried the cross for a while. Jesus also carried the cross with God's power, just like we do when we carry ours. He didn't judge his fellow criminals. He didn't lash out in anger at those who beat him. And at the end, he looked like a failure. And we might too, in the midst of a gracious conversation with our enemy. But Jesus knew his purpose, and he was determined to stay the course, even when it looked like he was being proven wrong. And this is super important. He prepared with prayer. Church, I see a vision of God's people prayerfully considering the enemies in their world, treating their enemies as people dearly loved by God not by giving up our truth, but laying down our swords to honor even the people we despise. Not honoring their positions or beliefs, but asking God, how can we love them, serve them, and connect with them? Maybe they aren't completely the enemies we perceive them to be. Maybe we have more in common than we thought. Maybe the enemy has been handing out swords and we've been all too happy to wield them in a world that needs more mercy not more war. Maybe when we build that connection with people, we can share God's truth. And maybe we'll even learn a few things along the way. Maybe your enemy can become a brother or a sister. God's big enough for that kind of redemption. Is your imagination big enough for it? I'll leave you with Paul's words to the Galatians in chapter 2, verse 20. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Friends, consider with me how we can lay down our sword this week and pick up our cross.